Fallout 4 changed the Fallout franchise in many different ways. In my opinion, one of the biggest ways the Fallout franchise changed in Fallout 4 is the weapons and weapon customization. So I decided to use the first gun you get in Fallout 4. Can you beat Fallout 4 with only a 10mm pistol? I gave myself a perk set that I thought would be helpful and a name. I saw Big Adam destroy everything I ever loved in my life and saw my life flash before my eyes. I got frozen, saw, saw Nate get killed, and then unfroze again. I then picked up my weapon that I would use for this entirety of this run, the 10mm pistol. I also picked up some extra rounds and an extra 10mm pistol. I picked up some technology that was really old. I opened the vault door to leave the vault. I went to Sanctuary, talked to Codsworth, and told him that everyone I loved died. Scrapped Sanctuary, met Dogmeat, then made my way through the tunnel below Red Rocket to get the Fusion Core, then blew up the Sentry Bot at the disposal grounds, killed the raiders inside the Museum of Freedom, trying to use as little ammo as I possibly could, and making every single shot as precise as I could. Talked to Preston and the rest of the Minutemen that were being getting picked off like fish in a barrel. I then went on top of the roof, picked up the power armor, killed a raider on the roof, and actually managed to kill the death claw, but I did end up using all my ammo in the process. I then bought some ammo from the trash can and then made my way through the glowing sea. Well, I realized I had power armor and I was like, oh wait, I can go through the glowing sea and see if I can skip a lot of the storyline like you can in Fallout 3 by going straight to Vault 112 and getting your dad. And I wonder if I could go to Virgil, but he wasn't there. So I just decided to rob Virgil, take a bunch of his stuff, and I got a, and I got a stealth boy in the process, which was actually pretty helpful later on. I then went searching for the tales of the junk town Jerry or Jerry. And then I spent way too long in the Super Duper Mart looking for it, but I did eventually find it. I helped Pallet and Dance, and by I mean help Pallet and Dance, I mean I shot like two bullets, but I got some new am but got some ammo in the process, and he killed all of them, and all I did there was just sit there and look pretty. I killed some super mutants inside the place. I killed some raiders to get the one raider's power armor and also because they had a uh, magazine that I needed. I talked to Piper outside Diamond City. She helped me get inside. I then bought some 10 millimeter rounds and sold the rest of the other ammo that I've gotten to both Percy, Percy's owner, and whatever his name was. I then did the interview with Piper and told us that it was pretty ice cold inside the vault. Then I saw that there was a vault nearby, and I thought it was Park Street Station, Vault 114, but then I realized it was Vault 81, so I had to go all the way back around to Diamond City and then go to Park Street Station. Inside Park Street Station, I used as little ammo as I possibly could, killing the Triggermen, but the good thing is that most of the Triggermen actually had 10mm pistols, so I was actually getting ammo back in the process. I killed Dino as fast as I possibly could, I then made sure Skinny Malone and his gang were no more. I then made my way to Good Neighbor and bought some 10mm rounds from Cleo, then went back to Diamond City, talked to Nick about wh what happened to my child and everything that happened. I then used the Stealth Boy because I was having so much trouble trying to pickpocket the mayor, trying to steal Kellogg's house key because my charisma was that of a baked potato. I then gave the cigar to Dogmeat and that was the last time I ever saw my canine friend in this run. I quick traveled to Vault. Fort Hagen, Vats Kellogg before he could even say anything because he stole my son, ta told Nick that he was right about the Institute stealing my son, and then he suggested that we should go through Kellogg's brain. I talked to Dr. Amari inside the, the memory dome to have her send me inside Kellogg's brain. I spent a little inside Kellogg's brain and found some not cool stuff and found out he was the one who kidnapped my son. I talked to Nick who had some Kellogg inside him, so I told him that I would stay with Piper and that he could go home. I talked to Virgil inside the glowing sea. He was actually there for once. I wonder what he was doing while he was gone. He's probably grocery shopping. I went to Green Check Genetics and Vats the Courser before he could do anything because fighting some of the stealth boy is annoying. I then killed everyone inside the thing, burnt da Dance to a crisp in the quest, and then he gave me some caps. I then talked to Dance at the thing and he gave me a rank not some people weren't happy i boarded the pridwin which wasn't that uh bad which wasn't against the rules because i it because uh, i can't kill a super hu super mutant behemoth without using the minigun because it would literally be impossible to kill a super mutant behemoth with a 10 millimeter pistol 
I then talked to the captain, he gave me some orders, I then talked to Outer Maxin, and he, and Piper did not like that I was talking to Outer Maxin. I then chose Dance as a, as a companion because Piper kept on hating everything I was doing. I got my own suit of power armor. I then went around meeting the entire crew on the Pridwin. I then went down and killed the superhuman behemoth. I then cleared out the armory, killing every single super mutant that dare stood in my way. I then fast travel. I then leveled up and showed you guys all my perks because you guys can see all the perks that I used and see that I did not cheat at all, just in case if there was any one person that thought I might have been cheating. I then talked to a knight. He didn't like me that much, but he gave me a mission. I then talked to Scribe Halen. She gave me a mission. I then finished the night's mission by killing every single feral ghoul I could find inside the subway station. I then talked to Dance inside the railroad, got the courser chip and decrypted, analyzed. Don't really know what we were doing down there. Then we went to Virgil's house, but for some reason Dance decided to shoot the death claw for no reason. When I fast traveled, talked to Virgil. He told me how to get inside the institute and that I would need to talk to the cripple. Elder Maxon told me I would need to talk to the cripple. So I went down, talked to the cripple near the airport, then got a biomedic scanner from a hospital. I don't know why it was inside a hospital, but it was inside a hospital. Built everything to get inside, talked to Elder Maxon, who told me to get Dr. Lee, Dr. Madison Lee from Fallout 3. Talked to the cripple, who told me that, I, that she wanted me to put some data analyzer inside the computers talked to father and he told me everything that happened to me inside the vault and everything that happened after he told me and then i talked to madison lee who I, and asked her to rejoin the brotherhood of steel she didn't want to so i went and got some data about virgil and told her that virgil had escaped and she wasn't happy about that at, at all i then killed father before i left the institute because no second chances I then, I then reported back to Elder Maxon and told him that Dr. Lee had agreed to rejoin the Brotherhood of Steel. I then talked to the cripple who told me that I was tasked with helping rebuild Liberty Prime. I talked to Madison Lee and she said she would refuse to help rebuild Liberty Prime but I, and I told the cripple that and the cripple must have talked to her or something because she eventually started helping us. I got a high powered magnet to help connect all of Liberty Prime's arms and legs to the body, then built four electromagnetic actuators, I don't know what they did, told the cripple and she told me that I had to go get more supplies. I went out to the glowing sea to go to a bunker to get some bombs. I talked to the guy who owned the bunker. He wasn't he wasn't cooperating, so I had to kill him. I then placed a signal interceptor down and talked to Dance, and Dance told me to go back to the airfield and talk to the cripple. The cripple wanted me to power up Liberty Prime, so I did. I powered up Liberty Prime, but he wasn't strong enough to move yet. So the cripple told me that I would have to go Talk, go back to Elder Maxon and he had something to tell me. Elder Maxon told me that the man I loved, I trusted, I believed, my best friend, Dance, was a no good for nothing dirty synth. So I talked to Scribe Halen and she told me how to find where Dance was so I could track down and kill him. I tracked down and killed that no good liar for lying to me. I told Elder Maxon, he told me that I get Dance's power armor, his room, and everything that Dance ever knew and loved. I raided Dance's room for everything so I could sell up for caps and buy more ammo later. I talked to the captain who told me that he wanted me to go and exterminate the railroad and I cannot explain how happy I was to do that. I made my way and killed every single person that dare oppose me inside the railroad headquarters. I then reported back to the captain and I told him everything that I did and how I killed every one of those people inside the railroad. I reported back to the cripple who wanted me to get some big giant metal thing from Mass Fusion Building. I went to Mass Fusion Building, killed as many since as I possibly could on the roof, hacked into the terminal, fixed the elevator, then got the beryllium agitator to, to give to Liberty Prime. I talked to the cripple who told me how to insert the beryllium agitator inside Liberty Prime. I put the beryllium agitator inside Liberty Prime and it was at this moment I did not know that this was the end of the game because I had never sided with the Brotherhood of Steel before. Every single time I sided with the Institute or the or the Minutemen. And what I did not know was that I could not go back and buy ammo. But what I did know is that I didn't have to follow Liberty Prime. I could fast travel to CIT ruins like I did here, and he would just automatically teleport there. I don't know what he would do, what he does to make it teleport him there, but I was also low on ammo. But luckily, I sided with the Brotherhood. 
Since I sided with the Brotherhood, Liberty Prime blew a giant hole into the CIT ruins. I saved as much Hamel as I could, killing the synth, and I had the scrounger perk, so I had a chance of every single time I killed a synth to get 10mm ammo. But every single time I were to shoot someone, I would go for headshots, and I would... I then hacked Father's terminal to override the door controls to reach the reactor. Then, on my way down to the reactor, I ran into some synths, but I didn't have much of a problem because, again, I sided with the Brotherhood of Steel. They had miniguns, Gatling laser miniguns, which made everything so easy. But the only problem was is that when they killed someone, I, the scrounger perk didn't activate. So I didn't have a chance of getting any ammo from the people in the Brotherhood of Steel killing them. I activated the reactor and I was teleported to the back to the main area. I told Sin Sean that he could come with me even though I really didn't want to. I then blew up the Institute and beat Fallout 4 with only a 10 millimeter pistol. This run was a fun run. It was actually a lot of a difficult. There were some points that were difficult, like at the very beginning, killing the death claws. But after, as you leveled up, you got your perks to go gone up, and you also were able to do more damage. And also, the more that I upgraded my pistol, the more that it did more damage, which made killing death claws and red scorpions a lot easier. Also, there's also one more quest I had to do. I had to just go through some dialogue to complete the final Brotherhood of Steel quest. And there, I completed a new dawn. And finally, I actually completed Fallout 4.